Marson's Domain. Hey everyone, Marson here. And today I want to talk about the huge controversy on Smash Bros. for Wii U, which is if Bayonetta should be banned from tournaments. Now this is coming from a spectator, because I do play competitively when I play, but I don't really enter tournaments. Although when the inevitable Switch version comes out, I do plan on going to tournaments more. But I just wanted to start off by saying that early on in the video, because if people don't want to hear this from a spectator's point of view, then I can understand that, because some people that are talking about this go to tournaments all the time. But I thought it'd be interesting to get a spectator's point of view, because I feel like a lot of spectators have been very vocal about banning Bayonetta, and I'm actually against that. I think that for a lot of spectators, they don't fully follow the game really closely. I think they just kind of watch tournaments whenever they see them come up. So if you only watch very few tournaments and you just kind of follow the really big things that happen with Smash, I think it's very easy to fall into that trap of thinking that Bayonetta is just winning everything. But if you watch as many tournaments as I do, you can kind of see that that's just not the case. Bayonetta is not this unstoppable force that's just winning all these tournaments. Now Cloud in doubles, which I don't really watch doubles at all, it's just not really something I like to watch. But when I hear about people talk about banning Cloud in doubles, they have the results to back it up. Because Cloud in doubles is apparently just winning everything. But in terms of Bayonetta in singles winning everything, she's not. And to be honest, most tournaments that I watch, she's not even really that abundant in top 8. I think a lot of people know how to counter Bayo when it comes to top level play. And I think that it's just that the tournament in particular that really started this was Frostbite. And I believe there was three Bayonettas in top 8. I heard some people saying 4, which I don't know if they were counting DeBuzz, but DeBuzz rarely plays Bayo, and he didn't play Bayo in that top 8, so I don't really think that counts. But that tournament, which people are forgetting, was missing a lot of other top players. Nairo wasn't there, Void wasn't there, MKLeo wasn't there. So there were a lot of people that can beat Bayonetta that weren't there. And I don't think it's odds that that particular tournament managed to have a good amount of Bayonettas in top 8. So for people that just watch the game sporadically and don't watch it all the time and don't really play it too often themselves, I think it's easy to think that Bayonetta is an unstoppable force. But when you start to learn the character, you start to learn that there's a lot into Bayonetta that makes her good and makes her actually hard to use. Yes, there's a good chance that if you are decent with Bayonetta that you could beat a lot of people that play casually. But some of these combos that you see in these tournaments are actually kind of hard to pull off because the opponent can not only DI, but they can SDI, which is when you shake the controller in a specific direction and it can kind of push you out in that direction. So if you're doing that, you can get out of a lot of Bayonetta combos and then that Bayonetta player has to kind of follow your DI, which you can change up all the time. So when you see these zero to deaths and stuff like that, it's not really easy to pull off. These players have put in a lot of time to learn this stuff, but I can understand that from a casual spectator that when they watch this, they just go, oh, well, Bayonetta is just completely overpowered, which she's easily a top tier character, but you can't just pick her up, hit up B, side B, up B, up air, and then just kill someone at zero. Unless the opponent is literally just doing nothing, just not even holding the controller, because there's a lot of different things that they can do to avoid even being in that situation in the first place. So I don't think Bayonetta should be banned from singles. And I think as time goes on, people are going to learn a lot of counterplay to Bayonetta. And like I said, she's already not winning a lot of tournaments as it is. So there may be a rise in the amount of Bayonettas that we see, but I don't think she's going to be an unstoppable force that just ruins Smash 4. And also, I'm someone that believes that we are getting a Smash for Switch. And I also believe that they're going to balance the game when we get that. And I can assure you that they'll probably nerf Bayonetta. And I think that they'll actually get rid of that third jump glitch, which allows a lot of these early kills to begin with. So that's all I have to say about this. I just wanted to make this video because I watch Competitive Smash all the time. And this has been a big thing being discussed. So I figured I'd give my take as a spectator. So hopefully you've enjoyed listening to someone who's a spectator and not as much of a tournament goer. But either way, that's all I have to say about this. So let me know in the comment section below how you feel about all this. Do you think Bayonetta should be banned? Do you think Bayonetta is fine? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.